Um, but just, just to, as your final act tonight, um, we've got John McDonnell and Jeremy Corbyn. Can I, um, can I, first of all, can I thank Crispin and the whole team that have been doing this throughout the year? They've been doing stand up for Labour for the last 18 months or so, right around the country, and all those other performers that have been fantastic in terms of turnouts. And I want to thank you as well. I want to thank you all. This last year, this last year has been a hell of a year. Hell of a year. And I want to thank you for standing with us throughout that period. We started off the year to consolidate Jeremy's administration. And as you know, we were winning parliamentary by-elections. We won mayoral contests. And then, desperately, we lost the Brexit vote. Desperately. And then they used that as the excuse for the coup. And I just want to say this. You stood with us throughout that period, and you delivered an increased majority for Jeremy. That was the message you took back. So I want to say thanks. It's been tough since then, to be frank. We've had a couple of impossible by-elections to fight, and I just want to thank the candidates that stood there in the most difficult of circumstances, both in Richmond and Sleaford as well. But the politics might be tough, but to be frank, it's the people who found it the toughest. This Christmas, there'll be 200,000 kids who'll be relying upon the food banks to deliver their Christmas meal. 120,000 of those children will be in temporary accommodation in the sixth richest country in the world. There's 1.6 million elderly people now, pensioners who are living in poverty. There's a million of them who've lost the care that they once had as a result of the cuts in social care. So I want to wish you all a very wonderful Christmas. But I also want you to pledge this that when we come back in 2017, having rested up, we're going to mobilise the biggest campaign at the grassroots level this country has ever seen. Because we, we can't wait for a general election. We've got a campaign because those kids and those older people and the rest of society can't wait either. We're going to campaign to tell those kids we will build the homes that they need, and they're called council houses once more. And we're going to tell two thirds, two thirds of the children living in poverty are living in families where someone's at work. So we're going to say to those families, we're going to lift you out of work by giving you the jobs that you need at a living wage of £10 an hour, protected by the restoration of trade union rights and collective bargaining. And we're going to have a real pension as well. We're protecting the triple lock because we campaigned for 30 years against Thatcher's break of the link between pensions and earnings, and we're going to maintain it and have a real living pension as well. That's the hope. That's the hope that Jeremy Corbyn has given to our movement, and next year, through our grassroots campaigning, with our 600,000 members, the biggest political party in Europe, we're going to take that message to every street, every community, every town, and we'll transform will transform this society on the basis of, yes, electoral victories in due course, but more importantly, by winning the battle of ideas in 2017. So have a wonderful Christmas. Have a wonderful Christmas. But come back ready for that campaign. Solidarity.
the man who delivered that inspiration, that message of hope, Jeremy Corbyn. John, John, thank you for that and for all the other days that you've done so much to inspire and lead our movement and say the things that aren't always easy to say, not always popular at the moment, but in the long term and the long run are right. John, you're such an inspiration to so many people, the way you've stood with those with disabilities, those that have suffered racism, those that have been made homeless, those that have been unfairly imprisoned. It's people like John McDonnell that are absolutely at the core and centre of our movement and the liberty and justice that goes with it. And I want to say thank you to all of you for coming tonight. You thought you were coming for an evening's music and entertainment. You have the music, you have the entertainment, then you get two blokes of a certain age coming on the stage. I'm really sorry about that. But I've got a certain affection for this hall. I've got a certain and very real affection for everyone in this hall because I owe my life to this hall. Really, it's true. Why? Why, you ask? Oh, God. I don't do personal. But tonight, a little bit of personal. Long time ago, there was a fascist government in Spain. There was an insurgence by Franco. People met in this hall in solidarity with those that were being assaulted and killed by the fascists. My mum sat there, my dad sat there, their eyes met across the aisle, and here I am. <laughs> no passeran, absolutamente. Absolutamente, excelente compañero. <laughs> who was the comrade who said that? Where is he? All of them, oh! Tosh. Can you all stand together in honour of Tosh and Aslev? Tosh! <laughs> it's been um, an interesting experience this past year, I have to say. And uh, when we stood for the leadership of the party, and I use the word we because it was about members of the party, trade unionists, those that want to see politics done differently, saying there had to be a challenge and there had, had to be a change. And we mounted that great campaign in 2015, which resulted in the election victory that we all enjoyed. We reached out, we put forward a totally different economic agenda. Thank you, John McDonnell, for doing that, because that was the, that's the core and centre the core and centre of what all this is about. But you would have noticed we had a lot of opposition from uh, some of the media. No wonder Rupert Murdoch is so keen to get hold of, of um, Sky and other things at the present time. And we had uh, a challenge and a new leadership election this last summer. And uh, Lara and I spent the summer travelling the length and breadth of the country by train, Tosh, absolutely by train, all the time by train, all the time by train. And your members are great. And um, we had a, a campaign done in a different way. It was much more open air, and it was trying to reach out to the widest possible audience we could. And it was incredible the number of people that would come to the open air rallies who were not necessarily people who were even Labour supporters. They came out of interest, they came because there was a debate going on, they came because there was a different message. So I've never forgotten, literally, on a wet Wednesday night, getting 10,000 people on the streets of Liverpool for an open air rally. The 3,000 three that came to the seafront in Ramsgate, those that came in York, those that came in Hull, in Leeds, in Manchester, in Newcastle, in Aberdeen, we had supportive meetings, in Edinburgh, in Glasgow, we had supportive meetings. We had rallies all over the country. And we had an incredible attendance, and you obviously have all seen what the result of that election was. Why are we under such attack from the media all the time? Think about it. 
just think about it. What we're saying is that the economic strategy that we've been taught for all these years, ever since uh, Milton Friedman in the 1970s, that the age of inclusion is over, the age of individualism is here, the age of rolling back the community functions of the state is here. We've been told, all of us, for the past 30 years, our generation relatively well off. The next generation is going to be poorer. The one after that's going to be poorer. The one after that's going to be poorer. We've been told there is an inevitability of the trickling down of poverty from one generation to another. At the very time when the world has never been richer, when there's never been a greater level of productivity, there's never been a greater level of technological advance that could be, should be, and must be something to be the advantage of all, not the excuse for the concentration of wealth into the hands of the very few. And so by the strategy that John is putting forward, this challenges a lot of people, challenges a lot of very powerful people. And so we have a lot of campaigning to do. And what was great about the events all over the summer and since has been that sense of inclusion of people coming together. They felt there was a space, their space, their space where they could put forward their ideas, put forward their inspirations and try and change things around. So. We challenge them on economic strategy. All through next year, John's going to be hosting regional economic planning conferences. They will be grassroots, bottom-up, ideas people have got. Because if you go to any business, any enterprise, any factory, ask people who know how things could be done differently, how products could be made better, how they could be developed. There's something about the structures and arrogance of so much in our industry that ignores and deliberately excludes those with talent and ideas. Put it this way, I remember in the 1970s, I was in the engineering union. The Labour government with Tony Benn had just taken British Leyland then into public ownership. Tony Benn said, we're going to do it differently. And he invited us, the unions and the members, to put forward a plan for British Leyland. And we went out. We had meetings of car workers, shop stewards, lots of people came together. They all had the most fantastically creative, brilliant ideas about how you could make more, more economic cars, how you could make cleaner cars, all the kind of innovation that's there. And you know what happened? The IMF came along. The Labour government unfortunately capitulated to what the IMF was demanding of them at that time. Tony Benn was removed and uh, British Leyland became, just like any other car company, was privatised, diced up, sliced up, sold off. And as a result, we lost so much of that talent and so much of that enterprise. We want to run an economy that's different. We want to run an economy that does allow people to have their ideas heard, to have their ideas developed, so that all the brilliance of technology can be developed and can be shared in the future. That's why we need to mobilise people to come together on that. In the old-fashioned way of the public meeting and the street, and the new way of the social media and the information technology. The two things are not exclusive, they're absolutely dovetailed together. Let's make sure we use all the technology that's available to mobilise people to our ideas and our inspiration. There's so much more I can say, but I just want to say quickly three things. Education, housing, health are absolutely central to everyone's lives. We want a national education service that does deliver education as a right for all, not a privilege. Because what this government is doing is turning education into a commodity if you're under five and a commodity if you're over 16. You see the squeeze that's going on. How about we had education for all for life, including adult education? John quite rightly mentioned the housing crisis. There's no solution to the housing crisis that doesn't begin, include and end with the need to invest, invest 
in good quality, lifetime tenancy, council housing for people, so that all our children can grow up with somewhere safe, warm, clean, dry, where they can develop their lives. And then we had the big campaign, and it continues, on health and social care. We called the government out on social care, called them out on the crisis in social care. And what was the response the next day? Oh yes, we'll put more money into social care, but we're not going to put any more money into social care. Instead, we're going to put it over to council taxpayers around the country and let councils raise council tax in order to pay for social care. The most grotesquely unfair, unjust, irresponsible way of funding social care. Because do you know what? The money you get for 2% rise in, social, in um, council tax is quite a lot in an area of high value. It goes a very long way in Kensington and Chelsea. It goes a very long way in, say, Windsor and Maidenhead. I think you all know about Windsor and Maidenhead. It doesn't go quite so far in Liverpool or Skelmersdale. It doesn't go so far in Hull or Leeds. The result of that will be grotesque levels of inequality in social care, particularly for the frail elderly. So their real message is, if you're old and poor, and you live in a poor area with low property values, you're worth less, you get less, and we care less. Well, we don't. We believe it should be shared and spread across the whole country. And so we have to make the arguments and put them there all the time. And you know what, today I was asked by somebody, somebody who really should know better, saying, why don't you form progressive alliance with the Liberal Democrats? <laughs> and I just said, what I really love about the common parlance of the media are two things. One is, if anybody's against anything John says, or I says, or Diane says, or, or Becky, or Rachel, or any of our brilliant people in our shadow cabinet, they're moderates. They're moderates, okay? And um, if the Liberal Democrats want to do something, that's progressive. And I said, well, can I just ask you to answer me one question? What is progressive? about propping up a Tory government that took 40 billion out of the, out of the economy, that introduced a top-down reorganisation of the NHS, that has led to 120,000 and more children living in temporary accommodation this Christmas, and led to the most grotesque levels of inequality in our society that we've seen for a very long time. Sorry, we need to do things differently and better in the future, and we will. But let's finish on this, finish on a high if we may. Life is difficult, life is tough. We're all here, not because um, we're on some sort of ego trip, we're here because we believe in things, all of us, every one of us in this room, because we believe in things. And when they talk about stress, what real stress is about is having to make harsh choices. Do you feed your child or do you feed yourself? How do you get through? How do you survive? Do you pay the rent or do, you, or do you pay the electricity bill? Those kind of tough choices that people are making every day because of levels of, in, of poverty, inequality and injustice within our society. But it's also about how we conduct ourselves and what we do. Because it's, yes, it's about bread, but it's about roses too. It is about the creative in us all. The creative makes us strong, helps us to be inspired. Children playing music, writing poetry, inspires them makes, them, makes them stronger, makes them more creative. Music is very much at the heart of our movement. Look at the brass bands, look at the miners' bands, look at all that great tradition, look at the folk tradition, look at the protest tradition. Think of all those young people trying to find somewhere to rehearse, trying to express themselves through music, be it rap or whatever else. So I am determined that our movement will be a movement for cultural freedom as well, and cultural expression as well. And that is what it is about. So I want you all to have a fantastic time over Christmas. I thank everybody for the friendship, the support, and the solidarity they've given, because the last year has been interesting. <laughs>
the Chinese proverb, may you live in interesting times, has never been more appropriate than this year. But we go into 2017 very optimistic, very determined, very hopeful and very, very strong. Thank you all for all that you do. Thank you for your support. Thank you for the solidarity. And now Rob Johnson will join us, coming through the door now, to sing the old song that you're all going to enjoy. Rob Johnson. The people's flag is deepest red. It's shrouded off our martyred dead. And ere their limbs grew stiff and cold, their hearts' blood dyed its every fold. So raise the scarlet band and high. Within its shade we live and die. Though cowards flinch and traitors steer, we keep the red flag flying here. Chutney, I had a 